just was handed, they didn't put it in an envelope, but I was just handed the Adaptee Award. So, so I, I now know who from has Price the awards. From Price Waterhouse, yeah, from chat. <laughs> so I, I now know who, who has the awards. Look, I'm thrilled to be here at uh, BoabCon. We had a fantastic event last night. How about that adaptive computing band? They were pretty good in this. <laughs> it's one of my favorite events because it reminds me of when I joined adaptive computing. For those who were here a couple of years ago, that was my first experience with MoabCon. I'd already met a number of the employees over a couple of weeks, but what really got me excited about adaptive computing, and in fact, was, was what convinced me to join the company were the customers that I met at MoabCon. I was just so impressed with the work uh, that each of you do and the importance of that work. And I, and I looked at adaptive computing and I said, wow, we're relevant. And, and this may seem obvious, but I, I was rhyme, reminded of a quote of one of the original founders, not Mark Zuckerberg, who recently left uh, Facebook last year. And when he left, he said, one of the reasons I'm leaving is that the best and brightest of my generation are trying to figure out how to get people to click on more ads. And then he paused and he said, that sucks. <laughs> well, I can tell you that's not what we do in this business, right? <laughs> I mean, we literally are doing things like trying to cure cancer and rocket science and amazing things with predicting the weather and ocean currents and seismic research and you look at some of the most relevant, that's better. <laughs> now you can really hear it. <laughs> some of the most relevant things that are happening uh, in the world, and our industry is involved in that. And I'm just proud to be at Adaptive Computing and have a chance to participate in that. So this is going to be the best MoabCon ever. We've got four pack days. We've worked very hard, uh, both from many of you who are presenting and also from folks at Adaptive Computing to put some great sessions together. We have three fun evening events. We had our first last night. We have over 30 technical sessions. And this is a great place to learn about some of the trends, improve your MOAB skills, learn about best practices. We have deliberately brought our best and brightest technical folks to this event, so you have a chance to rub shoulders with the people who are literally building the product and working on the code, and folks that have also been out and helping customers implement those best practices. Even more important is a chance to network with peers. See what your peers are doing, what they're up to. I want to thank our sponsors along with, with uh, Chad. Uh, we have Intel, who is our, our diamond sponsor, and will be speaking right after me. Uh, we also have HP, who is Platinum Sponsor, IBM our Gold Sponsor, and Cray our Silver Sponsor. We're thrilled, I mean these are rock stars in, in HPC, and we're thrilled to have them here at our, Moab, at our Moab Con. So thank you to our sponsors and for the events that they've helped put together, thank you. So today, we will start with the Intel keynote. We'll have a chance to hear then from NC NICS about Beacon, the number one green system in the world. And I'm really excited for this. Uh, it isn't just green, but, but the fact that most of us are facing a future where energy may soon become the largest expense for our data centers and compute centers if we can't figure out a way to in fact get more computing per watt. And it's really exciting to see some of the progress we're making. We've got a lot more as an industry that we have to do there. We have 13 HPC sessions today, and we have a great evening event at the Olympic Park. This is sponsored by HP, so my thanks to them. We'll have dinner there. There's a museum back that uh, is from the 2002 Winter Olympics. There'll be a chairlift. We get a chance to go on a zip line and a drop tower. I know that sounds a little scary, but I'm, I'm assured that it's all very safe, and uh, I'm looking forward to those kind of events. So dress appropriately. It is a little bit cold out there, uh, and you want to dress appropriately so that you can try out some of these uh, uh, types of, of fun activities. Tomorrow, 
will be pleased to have a keynote from HP, and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. We will also hear from Blue Waters, and we'll have a keynote from them. And we'll be doing both HPC and cloud tomorrow. So for those of you who would like to learn some about cloud, there will be some cloud tracks. We'll have the opportunity to do that. As I said very many times, I, many, and I've looked at cloud for much of my, my career, uh, I actually consider many of the problems we've been trying to solve in cloud have already been addressed or been thought about on the HPC side. And so I think this industry has a lot to offer there, and clearly we've seen that with our own, with our own product lines. And I think it would be a great opportunity to uh, continue to explore how these things are going to converge and, and come together as we move forward. That evening, on Wednesday, we'll have a MoabCon dinner. It'll be sponsored by IBM. And much like we did last year, we're going to do it in downtown Park City at the Riverhouse uh, Restaurant, and it'll be an opportunity to explore uh, Main Street in Park City. On Thursday, we're going to have our future day. And we'll be, this is going to be really exciting. We'll be looking into the future. We'll start with a panel debate on the future of HPC. Then we'll do a roadmap discussion from Adaptive Computing on the future of Moab and Torque, and you'll have a chance to hear from our product experts and to provide input into that roadmap. We'll have a keynote from IBM, as well as a keynote from Oak Ridge about Titan, the largest supercomputer in the world right now. We'll have some technical sessions, and we'll also have a keynote from our CTO, David Jackson, who will be talking about a vision for the future. I know one of the areas that he will cover will be in conjunction uh, with some research that he's doing around Cray, around topology, and some of the new topology capabilities that will be coming out in the future with Cray, and how those might be applied into other environments. So let me just recap a few things about adaptive computing. So we've made a lot of progress in the last year. We have customers, uh, Titan, that is now the number one system in top 500. We also have Beacon that we'll be hearing from today, which is number one in the green 500. And as I've often said, you know, we love big complex systems. We certainly can handle others, but we want to make sure that we can run on the largest of the large. Because our theory is if we can run on the largest systems, then we can probably scale for everybody else. And my guess is, if you were to talk to each of our sponsors that are here, and I'm sure they'll mention this in their keynotes, they have a similar strategy as well. Cut your teeth on the big complex ones, and then we're pretty sure we can handle everything else. Uh, and oftentimes, I'll have a customer ask me, you know, how do we know your product will scale? And, and the answer is really easy when you say, well, we already run on the largest supercomputer in the world, so I think we can probably scale. And, and I can tell you, scaling isn't easy. It's not easy for us. It's not easy for any of our partners. It's a huge challenge. But that challenge is exciting and fun to meet. And we have much further to go as we move forward in the future, as we look towards exascale, as we figure out how to be more energy efficient and energy aware. We have a lot of initiatives in the area of quality. We heard you loud and clear last year. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. And we have a strong roadmap. One of the things we've done is, is really stepped up to the plate. Even though Torque is open source, I think it's been important that we find ways to treat that quality much like it was a commercial product, and we have done so, and, and taken our responsibilities very seriously as the primary supporter for, for Torque. We've moved it into GitHub and uh, encouraged additional community participation, which I'm thrilled to say we've been having. We had a great Torque Fest yesterday. We have had a lot more contribution since we've done that, and we want to continue to make that easier to contribute, balanced at the same time with improving our quality uh, initiatives so that we actually run it through its paces before we just come out with a new version. So these are some of the things we've done over the past year. Many of them have just come to fruition. We just recently released Torque 4.2.2, and it appears to be the best release ever of Torque. One of the reasons, and I'll let you see kind of under the covers, is we, we, we implemented some automatic code analysis 
So we actually run tools that analyze our code, and with that, we find defects very early in the process and are able to fix those. When we first ran those tools earlier in the year, we, are, we had quite a few defects that needed to be fixed. And we fixed 10 times as many defects uh, this year as in previous years. Because part of fixing them is you've got to find them. And we were able to find them much earlier in the cycle, and I think that is going to show up now in the new releases, and we'll continue this process. We also moved to a C++ compiler that improves automatically the memory management and, and multi-threading, and that's going to have a huge effect as we attempt to run uh, in larger environments where multi-threading is, is absolutely critical. We're already seeing much better success there. We improved the threading itself to increase the scalability and make it more fault tolerant. We've done a lot more automated testing and we have been working on architectural enhancements, some of which you may have, may have heard about. You'll certainly hear more in the roadmap. However, I'm not ready to declare victory yet, not yet satisfied. We have further to go. Uh, I, I'd really like to get to the point where we eliminate crashes, where we make it more so that we fail safe. And I think there are ways to do that. I want to continue to simplify and document. Uh, in many cases, we give you so many choices of the way to implement our products uh, in, in, that it's, you're not quite sure where to start. And so we're going to be doing a lot more in the area of best practices and saying this is the normal way to implement the product. And then you can tweak it from there as opposed to having to make quite so many choices up front. One of the areas we've worked hard on is actually duplicate your environments. So we now have many of our customer environments duplicated or simulated at adaptive computing. And they're part of the regression testing and the automated testing processes that we're doing. So we have a better shot of actually making sure that the, the code has the appropriate quality before we release it. We're working to improve diagnostics. And you'll see a lot of this will be one of the big items that will show up in the roadmap. How can we make it easier for you to tell what Moab is, is up to and if it does have a failure, what that failure is due to and how to mitigate that. And so that will be coming out uh, as we go through the year. And of course, continuing to scale. Uh, I am confident that as time goes by, there will be a new number one uh, system. There always is. And we want to be able to continue to scale and, and run on ever larger and ever larger environments. So as we focus for the future, we're going to work on continuously improving a few areas. Quality, as I've mentioned, reliability, scalability, and its capability, which are the basic features. And you'll hear about all of these in our roadmap discussion and as you talk to various folks from adaptive computing and in the next couple of days. And I really encourage you to take advantage of that. We also want to involve you more. Many of you know as much about Moab as we do. And I think you have a lot to share. And so, Shortly, we will be launching a community user forums where we can actually more easily communicate one with another and share some of our best practices. This will also provide an opportunity to comment on documentation so we continually improve that. We have had many of you beta testing with us, and we're going to be doing more of that. And we'll have two ways of beta testing. One is just to download the beta and try it, and we definitely want some of that. But we may do some really early beta testing where we actually send engineers on site with the code and, and get immediate feedback from you about what you're seeing. And we've done some of that. We're going we're to continue to do that and do more as we go forward. So now for the fun part. This is our first annual Adaptee Awards, and we're going to be doing this every year, where we have a chance to recognize several different categories. We're going to look at, first of all, the best use of Moab in HPC. And then we're going to look at the best use of Moab in cloud. And then the third and final award will be a Lifetime Achievement Award. So first of all, for the best use of Moab in HPC, we would like to recognize NOAA. So a little bit about NOAA. NOAA has used Moab for five years. 
and they have greatly contributed to the science of weather prediction and climate change. Man, that's a lot better than getting people to click on ads. Uh, that, that's, that's amazing and, and, and life-saving work that they do. Through pioneering work in large-scale climate simulation, uh, they use Moab in a grid across several sites. We are proud to partner with NOAA on their cutting-edge science. On behalf of NOAA, Michael Callahan and Tara McQueen will accept the award. We'd, and we'd also like them to tell us a little bit more about their work and how they use Moab. Please come up and, and accept that. Thank you. Come on up. Thank you. Congratulations. Michael, congratulations. We'd love to hear a few words from you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Tara McQueen, uh, and this is Michael Callahan. I'm a system engineer at NOAA. I'd like to thank Mike for his work. He's a sys admin at NOAA uh, from CSC. I'd like to also thank Matt Ezel, a sys admin from ORNL, and Adam Carlisle, a system engineer from ORNL, and Bill Asbury, a project manager from CSC. I'd like to also thank the partnerships that we share with Adaptive, CSC, ORNL, and their continued support. We have a challenging responsibility when it comes to taking on the R&D workload at NOAA. All of our partnerships impact our ability to accomplish our workflow and make scientific contributions. Oh. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Next, we'd like to award the, the best use of Moab in cloud. And for that, we'd like to recognize Bank of America. <laughs> Bank of America has used Moab for three years. They run one of the world's largest private clouds. In fact, I'm not so sure if it isn't the largest private cloud. It consists of tens of thousands of servers, and they're an early innovator in private cloud. Bank of America has continuously pushed the envelope, creating a highly dense self-service environment that claims the lowest cost per VM in the industry. Bank of America's vision and innovation have contributed greatly to the industry as a whole. Now, due to other commitments, Bank of America is unable to be here in person, but Pete Dees, Prentice Dees, has arranged to accept the award via video conference. Pete, it's great to have you here, and we'd love to hear a few words from you. Thank you. I, uh, so on behalf of Bank of America, I'd, I'd really like to express our appreciation and uh, just overall goodwill towards the adaptive computing team. And we've been working together for a few years now, and we've faced down more technical challenges than we could have imagined when we got started. Uh, we're dealing with very, you know, very large infrastructures and, and, and very high demand and uh, uh, interesting uh, consumers of these services. So we've been, we've been very fortunate to, to have such a strong partner to help us deliver this, what we call our high density virtual compute space. And uh, we, uh, we've certainly created an efficient environment Adaptive's help. Uh, it's just it's been a fantastic journey, and we continue to uh, look forward to working with Adaptive. Thanks, Pete. We appreciate it. Thank you. One of the cool things about what Bank of America has done is, uh, unlike many so-called cloud implementation, this is not just for dev and test. They actually run live production systems and are migrating more and more of those to that environment. Many of the services you use today with Bank of America are in this private cloud. All right. Next, uh, we would like to recognize our Lifetime Achievement Award, 
And that goes to Don Maxwell from Oak Ridge National Laboratory. <laughs> this is a special award. It's, it's given to someone who's dedicated their entire career to advancing high-performance computing. While there are many great candidates, Don Maxwell has risen to the top. Currently managing Titan, the world's most powerful supercomputer, Don continues his life's work of advancing science and engineering through technical computing. A longtime Moab user, Don was instrumental in providing both requirements and testing for the initial port of Moab to the Cray X series platform. He is held in high esteem by his peers and was awarded the prestigious ACM Gordon Bell Prize in 2008. It's an honor for us to partner with Don Maxwell, a true pioneer in HPC. Now this week, Don is busily working on Titan's acceptance. And uh, while he really wanted to and was originally going to be here, he is unable to join us in person. So in, in his place and on, on behalf of him, uh, Matt Ezel from OR, OR, o Oak Ridge National Labs, let me just say it, <laughs> will accept this award and share his thoughts on working with Don. And after Matt, we'll play a short video from, from Don as well. I think we have that ready, right, Ian? Okay, please, come on up, Matt. There we are. Thanks. Uh, when I first learned that Don uh, had received this award, I was very pleased to hear that. Don, uh, Don is a great person. Uh, it's a pleasure working with him. He's a great mentor and also a great friend. I know he's spent a lot of time and effort working, on, uh, working with Adaptive to uh, improve the quality of Moab and Torque, and uh, I know he'll continue to do that for years to come. Um, he sends his regrets that he was unable to be here, but he has prepared a video, if we can go ahead and show that. Hello, MoabCon. Um, lifetime achievement, wow, that sounds like I'm getting old, but I'm sure that's really not the case. Um, but I really appreciate this uh, recognition. Um, this has been a fun journey that we've taken together over the past seven or eight years as we um, began the port of Moab to the Cray platform. Um, I appreciate all of the uh, efforts of the development staff at uh, Adaptive. Um, I appreciate all the collaboration with the peer sites. Um, I think this is a product that we have um, all can be proud of now. So um, thank you again for everything. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you today. Um, activities here with Titan have, um, have kept me here. So um, I'm sorry that I can't be there again. But uh, again, thank you for everything. We have some things to work on going forward that I think are exciting for the product. So uh, um, again, sorry I can't be there, but thank you. And um, I hope you have a great conference and I hope to see you next year. Well, as, as I said before, what, what makes adaptive computing great is our customers, it's you. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be uh, here with you here at MoabCon, and I'm always humbled and honored as I hear about the various things that you're doing with our product. I think we have time for just a couple of questions, Chad. Uh, I'll, I'll be around all week, and, and this year, as you can tell, my voice is actually working. Uh, so I'll be around all week, and, and we'll have a chance to, to chat with you. But at this time, I'd be happy to take a couple of questions, and then we'll move on to our, our next speaker. So any questions? We have a roving mic, so... Just raise your hand and we'll bring the mic to you. I have a question. How do I get one of those Adapti Awards? <laughs> well, <laughs> it looks like run a very successful HPC environment, a huge cloud, or spend your entire career in uh, making huge advances in, uh, in HPC, which, by the way, I know there are others in this audience who are doing that, Chad. You might I'll, have, I'll get right on that. You, you have a little ways to go. 